there's a eureka moment that you describe in your book ending aging could you give a give an overview of what led up to that eureka moment because i know a lot there are a lot of things that led up to that uh moment in the in the formation of sends and the the seven segments of damage repairs you describe in the book could you give people a brief yeah, overview of what that eureka moment was and, and what led up to it sure absolutely so so i started thinking about aging in the mid 90s and that was the kind of time when i started having these conversations about the desirability and feasibility of doing anything about it but of course that was just the start i had to get up to speed i had to you know learn what was already known about aging in order to have a chance of coming up with any new ideas that might have value and so that really was what i did for five years or so i was going to a lot of conferences you know getting to know the, the leaders in the field generally getting as comprehensive and in-depth knowledge <clears throat> if i could of what was already known about aging and then I was invited to take part in a small workshop, maybe only a dozen people in Los Angeles in the summer of 2000, um, which was uh, convened by a non-biologist, a guy who had decided he wanted to <clears throat> really do something about aging. And he had a little bit of money, so he'd employed a couple of people and he put together this little foundation and he convened this meeting. And there were a few other uh, senior um, gerontologists there. Um, and it was a two-day meeting. And the first day happened, and to me, it was extraordinarily disappointing because the remit that we had been given was to come up with radical new ideas that were dramatically, you know, out of the box. And this was just totally not happening. Everyone was just totally parroting stuff that everybody already understood and knew. So... The thing is, uh, it was Los Angeles, and I was based in the UK at that time, so I had jet lag. So I was basically awake for most of the night. And, uh, you know, I was frustrated about all of this. This is the, after the first day of the meeting. And it suddenly dawned on me what we'd all been missing, not just we in the, in the workshop, but the whole community. Coming back to the reason why I always thought it obvious that aging could in principle be brought under medical control. Uh, remember, that's because the body is a machine. And so why does the machine go wrong? Why does any machine go wrong after a long period of time, after it's reached its warranty period, if you like? Um, because it's a, it has accumulated damage progressively throughout its life um, as a consequence, as a bunch of consequences of its normal operation, just as a feature of physics. It just happens. Uh, but the thing is that we know from uh, the, um, the situation with simple machines like cars or airplanes that that is transcendable, that it's possible to completely exceed the um, warranty period of a car, for example, just by doing unusually comprehensive preventative maintenance on it, which just basically means um, removing the damage before there's too much of it, before the doors fall off. And so I realized that actually this is the way that we should be going about um, extending the healthy lifespan of the human body. Uh, because, um, you know, the human body is also a machine. And this was a big paradigm shift, because before then, everyone had said, well, basically, the only thing we can do is to make the body run more cleanly. In other words, to slow down the rate at which the body creates this damage, you know, self-inflicts this mm -hmm. damage in the first place. And people had more or less given up on being able to do that because they had recognized that in order to do that, one would have to have an extremely in-depth, detailed understanding of how the body works, which is, you know, just way beyond us because the body is so complicated. And of course, unlike, the, unlike cars, we don't have the plans. So, you know, it's just not a, not, not, not a plausible approach. Um, whereas preventative maintenance is completely different because there the only thing you have to do is to characterize what the damage is. In other words, what changes are happening to the structure and composition of the body. You don't have to understand much detail about how the damage is generated or for that matter, much detail about how the damage is bad for you, how it actually translates into pathologies once there is too much of it. Um, so this was a completely new idea. And, of course, I 
jotted it down as best I could and uh, presented it to the workshop the following morning, first thing. And nobody understood a word that I said. I'm sure I said it very badly, mm. far, far less well than I've just said it to you. Um, and uh, Yeah, you've had so, some yeah, practice. <laughs> yeah. And um, a few months later, I ran my own workshop with only half a dozen people, um, which was basically the, uh, uh, the purpose was to break my idea, to find ways in which this could not work. And, well, um, the idea survived the workshop to an extent that I was able to write it up as an academic paper with all of the participants in the workshop as co-authors. And that came out eventually in 2002. Um, and, you know, the rest is history. 